Yo, what is going on, people? Today, I'm going to be showing you guys one tip from bronze all the way to GM to help you get to the next level. And before we begin to the video, let me tell you about this little game. You've probably heard what the best mobile game of the year is, but if you haven't, Honkai Star Rose, a new multi-platform space fantasy RPG from Hoyovers, the makers of Genshin Impact, which is now playable on PC, PS5, and mobile devices with shared data across all platforms. To celebrate their victory, they've released a new 1.6 update, which allows you to experience new maps, events, and characters. One of the new 5-star characters is Ruan Mei, a beautiful ice-type character that follows the path of harmony and is capable of supporting her allies with crazy speed and break effect, the other one being Dr. Ratio. Yes, that is his name. Which is an imaginary type character that follows the path of the hunt and can get crazy buffs based on what his enemy debuffs are. With that, you can get to try a new 4 star character named Shui Yi, a quantum destruction character who can deplete enemy toughnesses. With this update brings the new map Seclusion Zone and a new simulated universe update which gives us new ways to play. Alongside the new characters, the long last and highly sought after Stellaron Hunters Blade and Kafka will return in this update. And right now, if you log in for 7 days, you can receive up to 10 free Star Rail special passes, which you can use for any of the new 5 star characters and pull for Ruan Mei or Dr. Ratio. But for the first time ever, logging in on January 17th, you can receive a free copy of Dr. Ratio. So don't wait. But using the code popping on screen right now and clicking the link in my description, you can receive up to 50 free Stellar Jade, which you can also use for Ruan Mei or Dr. Ratio. So what are you waiting for? Join over 80 million players playing Honkai Star Rail already, and let's get right back into the video. Alright, moving back into the video, I just want to give some general tips that can help you rank up more efficiently. I mean, the first thing I want to go over is mentality. More so, I want you guys to, you know, take a break if you guys kind of realize you're tilted because a bad mental isn't really going to help you or anybody on your team. Personally, I make a rule. If I lose three games, I usually get off by them because it's just not an Overwatch day. But yeah. And then speaking of not helping out people, um, something that you can do if you have friends is try to find a duo in your rank, whether that just be you have someone from school or you just find someone while you're solo queuing and ranked. Um, this can help get rid of the variables of having a bad healer or a bad tank or a bad DPS. The last thing I really want to mention is having at least three heroes to play. Let's be real, one tricking is cool, but sometimes it would be a lot easier if you played someone else. Now, if you don't know me, I'm a Genji main, but I can play Soldier, Reaper, uh, even Torb if I really need to. With that out of the way, let's move on to bronze. Now, one thing I really want to note on bronze is I believe that a lot of bronze players don't really take responsibility. A lot of the times they would use the it's always my healers or my tank wasn't holding up his shield or taking space. I get it. There's always those times where your tank and healers seem like they're throwing, but I promise you if anybody in any higher rank was thrown in bronze, they would immediately climb or just dominate the lobby because they know what they're doing. They know how to make the right choices, what to do, um, and how to change their play style based on what their team is doing. Realize what you're doing wrong. Always ask questions about what you did wrong and always try to find the answers to them. Now moving on to silver. One thing that you can understand is how much damage things do as well as understanding the hero interactions. What I mean by that is with knowing the damage, something that you can use is this code appearing on screen right now but just knowing how much damage your abilities do uh, for example genji's blade does 110 damage and far rocket does 120 and so on having the knowledge of these things allows you to know how much damage you can tank and being aware that you can get one shotted by hanzo's arrow or you're gonna be actually really one shot from like a bastion grenade and so on besides that i want you guys to go in training range and if you don't already know learn the ability cooldown this will save you a lot of time compared to just learning in game but moving on we're gonna go into gold and what i think a lot of gold players lack is focusing on positioning and my little trick that i like to tell everybody in learning how to know if you have good positioning is one 
if you can do your job efficiently and two can you do it safely um, for instance if i am on soldier and i feel like that i'm safe but i'm not really shooting anyone then it breaks one of those rules or if I can do my job efficiently, but I can't do it safely, like a Winston's able to jump me or Tracer's able to dive me, then I'm not safe. In order to know if you have good positioning, I need you guys to say yes to both of those questions. Besides that, look at your most recent game in the Overwatch replay system and just look at if you could have been playing behind this cover or if you're way too far from your team and so on. When it comes to plat, one thing that I think a lot of people lack is once they understand the game decently, one thing plat players tend to do is get a little too comfortable. One thing you must realize once you get into these higher ranks is in order to change, you have to be uncomfortable and limit test yourself. Platinum players tend to stick to their routes and always go the same route, doing the same thing every single game and don't realize that this is what is holding you back. Now, you may have used these tricks to get to plat, but to get out of plat, you need to change the way you play, whether that be an angle you always take and always alt on or trying new things. Now, personally, when I play Genji, even though the safest combo is the fan dash, um, sometimes you need to just test yourself and see if you can hit that dash fan combo. You never know if it's gonna hit and you might as well practice it. So don't be afraid to try new things in plat and I could see you get into diamond very, very easily. Now moving on to diamond. Once you get to diamond, you're honestly pretty good. I'd say you have decent aim by then, understand the game at a decent level. Honestly, there's a couple of things in diamond to help you get to masters. And I mean, it's not one tip. Who doesn't like more tips these days, you know? But the one thing to get out of diamond is alt tracking and relating to that, going back to positioning, using that knowledge, how are you going to play with this knowledge? For instance, it's been like two or three fights now. Zarya has a Graviton. How would you say you're going to position yourself? Now, the obvious thing is Zarya is going to probably look for a moment when all of your teammates are grouped up. So what are we going to do here? We're going to take a bit of a longer position. We're going to not play in her effective range so that we don't get grabbed and team wiped all at once. And with positioning based off the tracking, you want to also think about positioning yourself against certain hero matchup and how it will change your play style based off your counters. For instance, if I'm playing Farah and they have a lot of hit scans and I want to be ignorant, I'm going to have to hug a lot of my aerial cover so I can cut line of sight from the soldier, Cass or Ash and perhaps close the distance in sooner rather than if they had a Junkrat or a Genji where I can just kind of fly for free. Now next we're going to talk about Masters and I think the most important thing here in Masters is learning target prioritization. As a DPS player, most of the time it supports or even as a support target prioritization is important for your teammates on who you need to keep alive and whatnot. Target prioritization is quite important, especially in Masters, once you have the game sense to realize what is important to take down first or noticing win conditions. Now to hit GM, one or two of these three things allowed you to get in here. That being you have really good aim, really good game sense or comm, or once again, you have mastered positioning. Now in order to hit top 500, you need to be a master of all three of these things um, to hit either GM1 or top 500. Aim is quite self-explanatory. You just have really correct aim. Aim sense, I would say, kind of involves movement, comms, and it kind of relates into positioning. In terms of game sense and movement, it kind of knowing your 1v1s with certain heroes and how you should be strafing or moving against certain heroes. For instance, I'm going to be strafing a lot more differently with a soldier than I am with a Hanzo. If you want me to go more into detail with that, let me know down in the comments. Some positioning, like I said before, um, you know exact spots of when to be here and when not to be here, when to give up space, and how to position yourself when you know about enemy abilities. Once again, if you guys liked the video or found this useful, please let me know down below. Comment if I missed absolutely anything in this video. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Peace and love, baby.